What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So in this video, I wanted to talk about how to use sandbox tools, SketchUp's built-in terrain editing tool set within SketchUp. And before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. So that course is going to cover everything from getting started all the way through modeling for interior design, creating documents for layout, and also an introduction to photorealistic rendering. So if you're looking for a start to finish SketchUp training to really take your SketchUp use to the next level, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Sandbox Tools is designed to help you work with more site work type situations. So um, things where you have sites that move up and down or things where you need to create grids and move uh, basically the vertices or the areas where those intersect all around. So it's basically a suite of tools designed to help you with that. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that Sandbox Tools is actually enabled because Sandbox Tools is actually an extension. Um, so the way that you're going to do that is First of all, you can right click and in your list of extensions, you can scroll down and see if Sandbox is on the list or not. If Sandbox is on the list, just click on it and uh, that should bring this toolbar up. If it's not, you can go to Window, Extension Manager, and then you can scroll down to Sandbox Tools and you can just click the button to enable it and click apply in order to load that and you may still have to turn that toolbar on but basically this this contains a series of different tools designed to help you do different things with site work um, and really it's more designed not necessarily for site work as much as for working with a series of contours or grids and so the first tool is actually designed to help you create faces from contours or from lines with different elevations. And so the way that that works is you can either have a series of edges, kind of like this one, um, where they have different elevations associated with them, or you can import something like an AutoCAD file, which will allow you to create a face as well. And then when you've imported that, basically all you need to do is just select your series of lines, and then just click this first button, which is From Contours. What From Contours is going to do is it's actually going to create a face using those contours. And if you go to View, Hidden Geometry, you can actually see the triangulated face that's created. In here, you can see the triangulated hidden geometry. But you can see how that was a really easy way to create a face. And then if I was to come in here and hide all of these edges and turn Hidden Geometry off, you can see how you've got a nice smooth face in here. And then you could come in here with something like the Smooth tool and actually edit that and move different parts and pieces around. So then you could work with it once you've done that. So this works for more complex things like this AutoCAD file that I imported. And you can see how these contours all come in here. And I'm going to turn Profiles off so you can see a little bit better. You can see how these all come in here with their own elevation associated with them. So you can import AutoCAD files and then just select all of the edges and click the button for from contours. Now you do need to be a little bit careful with this because larger files are going to take a lot longer to load. So I, I would recommend probably only bringing in parts of the file that you necessarily need um, because it just has to come in here and create a lot of different edges and lines and everything else in order for this to work. But you can see how this makes uh, face creation from contours really easy. And so the first tool allows you to make a sandbox from contours, the second tool actually allows you to create a grid which you can then work with. So this allows you to create your own sandbox. So the way that this one works is you click on it and then you just single click in your model and move your mouse and then you click again and you click again. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a grid within your model. And one of the things that's really valuable with this is when you do that, when you first click on this, if you look in the lower right hand corner, it tells you the grid spacing. Well, what that allows you to do is that allows you to set the spacing between each line in the grid. So if I was to type something like 10 feet and hit the enter key, then I can single click and you can see how the grid that's created is a lot larger. If I was to come in here and do the same thing, but I was to type in one foot and hit the enter key and then click, 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 this grid is a lot finer, so there's a lot more boxes created. Now I will warn you, please do not come in here and set this to an interval spacing of something crazy like two inches. Um, you will lock up your computer so fast if you do that. So what you really need to do is you really need to, uh, you really need to 
kind of weigh the balance between how detailed your grid needs to be and performance. So um, basically, you really want to try to set this grid to something as large as possible so you're creating as few edges as possible while still getting the result that you want. And so now that we know how to create sandboxes, there's a series of tools on the right hand side of the line designed to help you edit those sandboxes. And so what those allow you to do is those allow you to move and stamp and drape things on your different geometry. So the first tool that we can use in order to do that is the smooth tool. What the smooth tool does is that allows you to basically edit geometry within a certain radius. And you can see how when I uh, click on the smooth tool and then mouse over this uh, this grid that I created, I get this red circle. The red circle is showing you the radius in which things are going to be adjusted. So you can see how basically when I click and drag, or if I single click and move my mouse up and click again, this is basically adjusting all of the different vertices in here contained inside that circle. And so you can adjust the size of that circle in order to adjust the amount of geometry that you can change at once. So like for example, you see how in the lower right hand corner, um, after I activated the smooth tool, I get a value for the radius. Well, if I type in a radius of 30 feet and hit the enter key, you can see how this circle gets a lot bigger. If I type in something like 50 feet and then move my mouse just a bit, you can see how it's gonna get even bigger still. And you can see how I can click, and I can either click and drag, or I can single click and then move my mouse up and down until I find a point that I like and I can click again. And so what that allows you to do is that allows you to come in here and edit that geometry. And then if you wanted to get a little finer with what you were doing, you could do like a 20 foot radius and come in here and just adjust the stuff inside this 20 foot radius. So basically what this allows you to do is this allows you to come in here and edit all of this geometry. And one thing to note is don't select any geometry and then activate the sandbox tools or um, activate the smooth tool because what that does is that basically comes in here and it calculates the 20 foot radius out from every single point that you selected in here. So if you do that and you have a whole lot of geometry created, your model could lock up. Instead, the best way to do this is to click off of this and make sure you don't have any geometry selected before you activate the tool. And then one other thing to note about this is this really likes working on the blue axis, so the up-down axis. You can't really click and drag to the side. You can see how this only goes up and down. However, if you have a situation, like let's say for example that this was rotated so that it was standing up, if you were to come in here and try to use the smooth tool and just click and drag, you can see how that's basically selecting all of that geometry. Um, within that radius, but from an up-down standpoint. And you can see how no matter where I click and drag, it only wants to move this up and down. However, in this case, you can actually hold the Shift key. So if I single click in here, then I hold the Shift key, you can see how that actually allows me to move that perpendicular to the section. So there's a lot of interesting things that could come out of doing stuff this way, but just know that you can move things perpendicular in here as well but it doesn't seem to like it. Like let's say for example, if I was to lay this back down, it doesn't really seem to want to do that when this is laying down. So it really kind of depends on what direction everything is facing, but the option is in there to move things perpendicular to the selection rather than just on the up and down um, axis. All right, so that's how you can kind of manually edit geometry. Now I want to talk about a couple tools in here that allow you to basically place objects on your sandbox. So the first one I want to talk about is called Stamp. And what Stamp does is it takes a shape and it actually stamps it onto this surface. And you can see how I have this exploded so that it's a raw surface. Um, and then I also have an object up above that I want to stamp down into this. And so the way that this works is you select the face that you want to stamp. You go up and click on the Stamp tool and then you click on the face down below that you want to stamp this on. And you can see how what that allows me to do is that actually allows me to stamp this and adjust all of the geometry around the shape that I'm stamping into, into the face of my sandbox. So this is a real good way to uh, anything that you're kind of bringing into a hill, for example, or 
Anytime you want to create like a flat pad, this is a great option for doing that. And there's actually some things you could probably do with some extensions in order to uh, change the way that this looks, but we'll leave it as is for right now. The other thing I want to point out is when you first click on this and you activate the stamp tool, you'll notice there's a red box that's shown and also an offset value in the lower right hand corner. What the offset value does is it shows you how wide the transition is going to be between your shape and the edge of this object that's being stamped. So if I was to type in a value of one foot, for example, and then click on this face, you can see how, whoops. If I was to type in a value of one foot and hit the enter key, and then click on this face, you can see how the transition distance between the sandbox and my shape is much smaller. So you can use this to adjust that. If I was to do something like, let's say, 10 feet. And one thing I'll note about this is it seems like sometimes you need to type in that value and then restart the tool in order for it to take effect. But you can see how that allows me a much larger transition. So if I wanted to do that, I could do that as well. And this will also work for shapes like this road. So if I was to take this road, for example, and stamp this in, and let's go ahead and set our offset to something more like 3 feet. And you can see how the red box didn't adjust, so I'm just going to reactivate this tool. And you can see how now it took effect. But now if I single click, this allows me to create this road in here. And you can see how the, all this extra geometry gets brought in. Now, this isn't necessarily the best way to create a road because this isn't really realistic. Really what the road would probably do is it would follow the contours or the shape of the site. And so in order to use that, what we can do, and I'm just going to undo that, but what we can do is we can use this other tool, which is called the drape tool. And so the stamp tool changes the geometry down below. However, the drape tool, instead of changing the geometry, actually takes the outline of this shape and drapes it on this face. And what I've done is I've come in here and softened and smoothed all the edges in here so that you can actually see what this is going to look like. And I just did that by selecting this whole thing and then going into the soften edges function. So if I was to do that over here, I would just go down to soften edges, check the box for soften coplanar, and I would just use the slider in order to hide all that geometry. So that's how that would work. But basically the way that the drape tool works is you activate the drape tool, you find the shape that you want to drape, and then you select the mesh that you want to drape that on. So you can see what that allows you to do is that actually allows you to drape this in onto this shape. And one thing I don't like about this is you can see how it didn't really close this in. Sometimes you may have to come in here and kind of trace along the hidden geometry just a little bit in order to turn this into a closed shape. So now if I go back to view and I turn my hidden geometry off, you can see how now this is actually an individual face within my sandbox. And so where this is really valuable is more when you do things like roads. So if I was to take this road, activate the drape tool, and then click on this face, you can see how that, that actually drapes the whole thing along this face. And then again, I have to do a little bit of cleanup, so we'll do that real quick. But you can see how now this is in here as its own geometry. Well, now I could come in here and I could apply something like a material. So if I wanted to apply like a blacktop material to my road, I could do that. But you can use this in order to make things that follow along the geometry. And then finally, the last couple tools, these are more designed to help you with editing your geometry. So let's say, for example, if you look in here, I've added some detail. And so the reason for that is sometimes when you're making a change, like let's say I was to type in a five foot, you know, let's say a 10 foot radius and hit the enter key and then adjust this. This works, but you can see how everything in here is a little bit blocky because you're just able to move the geometry that's in there. Well, what this add detail function does is that'll actually add in additional geometry. So now it basically subdivides this geometry. So now if I move that up and down, you can see how this is a lot smoother. So you can use this to basically subdivide these into sm smaller squares so that you can get smoother results. 
And then the last tool over here is for flipping the edges. And this is associated with the fact that these are made up with triangular shapes. So these look like they're made of quad or square shapes, but they're really not. If you go to view and turn on hidden geometry, you can see how these are actually made up of a series of triangular edges. And then the triangular or uh, diagonal edges are hidden. Well, what this tool allows you to do is this allows you to flip the way that those face. And so basically what that does is that allows you to make more natural looking geometry. So let's say for example that I was to click and drag this up. You can see how the way that this works, these flipped edges don't necessarily quite, you're not going to get as smooth a result as if I was to come in here and I was to use the flip edges in order to flip these to face the right direction. So if I was to come in here now, and move this one up and down. You can see because I made all of these face in more of a natural direction, so they almost make like a diamond around here, you get a little bit more natural looking shape. So you can use this to create smoother, better looking faces or shapes. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Are you using sandbox tools? Did you know it could do all this stuff? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.